it's the movement that's created in the Limerick attack that allows Galan to get that extra yard. And good players like him, they only need half a yard and sight of the goal to pop the ball over the bar. He's deadly accurate. Uh, his conversion rate is fantastic. Uh, and, and that's why it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult. Now, it'll be a big test, as I said, uh, for, for uh, Tipperary and what they're going to do on Sunday. And they will have, they will have seen that uh, they know if they give space to uh, the, the inside attack and Galan uh, particularly, uh, he will punish them uh, hugely. So not easily done. And uh, we can very easily sit here in a chair and say how it should be done. Uh, not easily done when everybody around him is moving as well and he's getting so much support from them. And that's why guys like Galan are able to pop over all these spines because they have so much support around them and it's just impossible to keep them down. Look, at they're, they're, they're on a roll these times and Galan is really back to his uh, very, very best. Yeah, I mean, he's he's 25, 26 this year. This lad, uh, you know, he's ha- had a lot of success under his belt. The way he finished the goal the last day against Cork, putting it into the ground, we've often talked about the high finishes. He's now putting it into the ground. This lad could really dominate in the next few years. But um, he is another example of a Limerick player that seems to be up-coached in the sense that you can see that them gradually improving over the last few years, that this lad has more strings to his bow than he previously did. I mean, this would be a concern I'd have when I look at the likes of Tipperary or when Cork supporters uh, look at some of their players. You wonder, is this lad doing the same thing for the last five years the exact same way and coming up short the same way? You know, obviously having the same success with the same things, but, you know, losing out the same way too. So that's that's the sort of question I'd have at looking at Limerick versus everyone else. They do so many small things right, and they all add up to uh, a couple of extra points here and there. Nothing was summed that up better than the Roy Orbison tattoo podcaster, um, I think it's called on Twitter, showing the short puck out stats for our short sideline stats for Mike uh, for for Limerick compared to everyone else. Michael, do you want to run through that there because you sent it to me last night? I just think it's fascinating because it's all to do with efficiency, and this is how Limerick play: be it efficiency in their puck outs, be it efficiency in their tackling, efficiency in their shooting. I just think sidelines are a really really interesting one. I basically think this is uh, a decision that's been made probably since maybe Darrow Donovan's sideline even in 2019 on Ireland semi-final, that controversial one that uh, should have been a 65 and been a potential leveller. They're basically, I'd say, the only team Kilkenny at times don't uh, don't take on sidelines. Even TJ would maybe like to. Sometimes he doesn't take them on maybe as much as, say, Waterford will take on a sideline. Jason Ford took on a sideline yesterday. Galway will take on sidelines. Limerick took four sidelines at the weekend, worked them all short and managed to get three points from it. It's Hurling is all about possession now. It's that's why you know ground hurling is gone. That's even why overhead pulling is gone uh, in the game to to some extent. But Limerick use the sideline now as we have the ball at our feet here. How can we hold on to the ball? How can we create a scoring chance? And like you look at it now and Gerard Hegarty is just standing with his arm like that, waiting for someone to make a run, and he just pulls it, maybe gives it back to the taker, and they take on a point. But to to be getting to be scoring basically as a result of 75% of your sidelines in attacking positions is fairly outrageous. Compare that to Tipperary, who got one point from their three. That was a Jason Ford line ball over the bar. Uh, Waterford got one point from their two. Dublin got uh, Dublin took, what, six sidelines and scored, ended up getting one from them. Um, same with Clare had five, I think, and got nothing from them. And same with Wexford, five, and got nothing from them. Didn't even get shot um, from them. So it just shows you they are, like, I know Paul Kinnerk is a mathematical genius, so he's literally looking at how do we increase our percentages of getting shots off, getting scores on the board. And they've looked at the short sideline um, and it's just it's yet another facet of the game where they're maxing nearly out of what they can what they can make from something, and it's just fascinating to see how they've clearly stacked the percentages in their favors and in all aspects of the game. Yeah, like I think you shouldn't three... underestimate chain. You shouldn't underestimate Limerick have won two All Irelands. You cannot underestimate the level of confidence that winning All Ireland finals will give to players. Uh, you're you're seeing a, a lot of those Tipperary players who played yesterday haven't been that successful at senior level. Uh, you'll, you'll see Clare, I suppose, are starting to get a bit more conscious, but the Limerick players are oozing confidence simply because they have been so successful. And, and that, to me, is a big factor. They, have, they trust one another, they know one another, and that's part of the reason why they're so successful at the moment. But the, in terms of those marginal gains, I know you're talking there, Nicky, 
In in terms of those marginal gains, you know, I, I look at Tipperary and winding up with taking a minute to hit a, a long range free and then driving it wide. And you know, look at what Limerick do to have Dermot Burns to drive it over the black spot. He's such, you know probably even a ninety percent free taker from from those distances and doing that with the sidelines and Tipper clipping them wide. I mean, all that stuff really does add up, and it comes back to the really good coaching that they have. Uh, look, absolutely. But John Kiley knows what, what his players are capable of. I mean, they have been work, these players have been around Limerick now for a number of years before that underage, coming to under 21, being successful. John Kiley knows what these guys are capable of. And he also, look, they've had some challenges over the years, and John Kiley is not just a great coach. He's a great people manager and person manager as well. He's not principal of a large second level school for, for, for no reason at all. Uh, he's, he's huge person management and his ability to manage the individual players. And the players now know very much what Kylie expects of them. And uh, that's why they're delivering. And that's why they're playing with such confidence at the moment. It's a, it, You can go back to the great click any team of a number of years ago. It was like that they had Cody knew the quality he had in his players. He almost didn't have to coach them because he knew he just had to keep them primed up going into every match. And for the most part, they were delivering in most of those games. Kylie is in exactly the same position, maybe a fraction area to compare the two teams. But right now, Limerick are heading in a direction that's not far off the Great Kilkenny team. And they, they could very well get up there in the not-too-distant future.